Okay, so we are going to do a short little mini lecture on balance and stability. So how do we get something to balance? And once it is balanced, how is it stable? So balance and stability is all about reflecting on the torque. So let's start with balance. Okay, so when something is balanced, what does that mean? Well, if I wanted to balance this pen cap, I'm kind of looking for another object, how would I balance it? What does that mean? Well, it means that it's sort of happy staying if it doesn't roll. Oh, that's the problem with this pen. I'm going to balance the eraser. It is not rotating at all. So if I'm going to get something to balance, I don't want it to rotate it. I want it to just stay stationary. So how do I get something to rotate? Well, to rotate something, I exert a torque. So if an object isn't rotating, that tells us that the net torque on that object has to equal zero. If an object is in balance, that tells us that the net torque is equal to zero. And that's important. So let's take an object. Let's take a uniformly distributed, nice meter stick. Is gravity acting along this meter stick? Well, yeah, it is acting along the meter stick. I have gravity acting on this little piece of the meter stick, and I have gravity acting on that little piece, and I have gravity acting on this little piece, and I have gravity acting on that little piece. Gravity is acting on all pieces of the meter stick. All right, that's going to be important. Now, if I place what I'm going to call a fulcrum, a balance point, at the center of the meter stick, and it's uniformly distributed, then I know that that meter stick isn't going to rotate. Well, how come? Well, there's a little bit of mass on this end of the meter stick, and there's a little bit of mass on this end of the meter stick. There's a force of gravity acting on this end of the meter stick. And if I'm going to draw the force of gravity on this end of the meter stick, how might I draw it? Well, that little piece of mass, which is exactly the same size as this one, has the same mass, therefore it must have the same force of gravity, mg. So my two arrows are the same. My two arrows are the same size. All right, well, I'm going to put my pivot point right here. That's my pivot point in my torque analysis. Well, this little bit of mass, well, it's exerting a force at a radius. We'll call radius A. And if it's exerting a force at a radius, here's angle A. And then it must be exerting a torque, torque A. And that torque is in the clockwise direction, so it's negative. All right, well, if I look at this force, it too is exerting a force at a radius. We'll call that radius B. And it too is exerting it at an angle. We'll call that angle B. And therefore, there also must be a torque, not A, torque B that's being exerted is trying to rotate the bar this way, which is positive. Now, how do these two torques relate to one another? Well, we know that the magnitude of a torque is equal to the force times the radius times the sine of the angle, the cross product of force and radii. Well, this has a certain radius. It's a distance from the middle to the end, and this is the middle to the end. The radius are the same. This little piece of mass is exerting a force that's equal to its weight, and this little piece of mass is exerting a force that's equal to its weight, so the force is the same. And they're both exerting those at the same angle. So in that case, the torque of B is going to equal the torque of A in magnitude and their opposite in direction. So they cancel each other out. Now. As I move and analyze a little piece of mass a little bit closer, but one of equal distance, or <laughs> not equal distance, 
Well, those two masses have the same mass, same force that they're exerting on that pole. They're exerting it from the same distance, and therefore their two torques are equal. Now, their torques are not the same as these torques. They're closer, so they have a, are exerting a smaller torque, but yet it's still equal. So as long as I put my pivot point in the dead center of this uniformly distributed object, then the torques acting about that pivot point will always be equal. And if I were to place a true fulcrum at that point, then the object would be balanced. Now, this is the exact center point of the object. And we said that the center point of that object is where, of a uniformly distributed object, the geometric center, is where the center of gravity was located. So perhaps we could stand to reason that if I put a fulcrum at the center of gravity, then my object will be balanced. Well, let's see if that works in other situations. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. It's going to be our first sort of prediction. Ugh, good lord. Okay, so what if I have an object? that is not uniformly distributed. So, instead of a nice meter stick, I take this meter stick and I whop a big glob of clay at the end. The center of mass of the meter stick, as we just showed in the last little bit, as in the geometric center. Well, now where does the center of mass go? Well, I have more mass on this location in space, so my center of mass is going to shift to this location. Now, if my theory is correct, then I should place a fulcrum at the object's center of mass, and that object should balance. Now, we know from our experiences that if I took an object and I globbed a whole bunch of clay on one end if that I had balance, I'm going to shift in this manner to balance that object. So intuitively, this might make some sense, but does it make sense physically? Why do we shift the balance point towards the center of mass for an object that's not uniformly distributed? Well, what's happening here? It's all about balancing the torques. In this case, I have more mass on this side. This is heavy clay. So I have more mass on this side, but it's a short distance away. So if I increase the force to get a torque, I might decrease the radius. For the same force that has torque, excuse me, torque, that has a large radius but less force. So this side of the meter stick has less mass, therefore exerting less force, but it has a longer radius, every little bit has a longer radius than this side. So I want to shift to get a balance in torque. If I push more mass over here, then I need less radius than over here to get them to balance. So it's consistent with our idea of putting a fulcrum or a pivot point at the center of mass. Let's take another little look and see if we can come with a generalization about balance and our center of mass. What if I have an object that looks like this? So this is a nice block. It's sitting just upright. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty stable. So here's my block. If, if it is uniformly distributed, let's say it has a center of mass in the geometric center. Now, we know that the force of gravity acts at the geometric center. That's the model that we use. We're going to see if that helps us with our balance idea. If I were to put the force of gravity on this image, my force of gravity is at the geometric center and is pointing straight down. Now, does this object tip over? Well, in order for an object to tip over, it needs to rotate. In order for an object to rotate, it needs to experience a torque. The only force acting on this object, we're going to ignore the, the um, floor for a moment, is the force of gravity. In order for the force of gravity to 
cause an object to rotate, it has to be acting at a radius. Well, what's our pivot point? Well, if we make the pivot point, instead of just a single point, we look at it as an extended point. Well, then the force of gravity was within that pivot point. And there's no radius. No radius, no torque. But what if I were to take this object, um, let's say it's a filing cabinet, and I were to open the top drawer that is chock full of all your old papers and work. What does that do to the object's center of mass? Well, I now have more mass shifted higher and over. My center of mass might shift into this location. All right, well, the force of gravity acts on an object's center of mass. So here's my force of gravity. Now, I also have a radius. If I consider this as my extended pivot point, I now also have a radius. And what will happen to the filing cabinet? It'll tip over. So how can we think about balance and generalize it? If the center of mass is above the extended pivot point, which we are going to call the base, then the object is balanced. If my center of mass moves outside my base, I tip over. Now does that work for ourselves? Think about how we're balanced. If I want to stand there, you can't see my feet, but if I wanted to stand on one, on my two feet, my center of mass is in my abdomen. Well, if I look down standing between my two feet, go up, stand up, do it, do it at home. If I look down and stand on my two feet, my two feet, this is my center of mass, my two feet are the base. My center of mass is above that base. If I take my center of mass and I shift it over my right foot, eventually, I'm going to tip over. If my center of mass shifts somewhere outside of this base, I'm going to tip over. Similarly, if I'm standing on my two feet and I pick up one foot, what did you see my body do? Well, my center of mass is still the same. It has to shift over the one foot that remains on the ground. So stand up, put your, put your hand on your belly button, more or less your center of mass. Not quite for everyone, but we'll just go with it. As you shift to one foot, look where your finger is relative to your foot. It should be over your base. How do we use this? Well, let's imagine we're on a rocky, rocky bus. We're standing up on the bus, waiting for, you know, it's a full bus, we're standing up on the bus. We're pretty rocky, pretty rocky. Do we stand with our feet together, rocking around? No, we spread our legs. We increase the size of our base. The wider the base, the less likely it is for our center of mass to move outside of it. That leads to stability. So one way that we can be stable is by having a wider base. A wider base enables us to have a longer distance for this center of mass to be pushed outside of that base in order to be balanced. Think about football players. When they're learning how to tackle or get knocked over or prevent getting knocked over, what does their coach tell them? To say, stand real tight and straight and put your feet together and stand up nice and tall? No. They say, spread your legs apart. Be stable. Gymnasts, when they're about to fall off the balance beam, one of the best ways to not fall off, spread your legs apart. Be stable. Gymnasts don't land on one foot. When they land, they land with their shoulder width apart any slight movement, then they can stay stable. Increasing the distance that it takes for your center of mass to get outside your base, that helps with stability. Larger base, you're more stable. All because if our center of mass is above our base, we are balanced, period. If the center of mass is not above the base, then we are not balanced. All right, well, what else helps with stability?
civility. If we think about other things about civility, we also think about getting low. That football coach doesn't say, just spread your legs out, spread your legs out and get low. When a gymnast lands on the mat, she doesn't land with straight legs, she bends her legs and she's more stable. Or on the balance beam, she's falling, 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 she bends her knees. You become more stable. You can do that. Suddenly kind of stand up, move around. As soon as you bend your knees, you'll feel yourself get more stable. Why does that help with our stability? If we lower an object's center of mass, in order for it to get outside the base and thus tip over, we actually think of it as lifting it up and over a fence. The lower this center of mass is, the higher we have to lift it to get it outside the base. And outside the base is when it falls over. So lowering the center of mass increases stability because we have to lift it higher to get it geometrically outside the base if we're going to tip something over. Your book shows a good graphic on that. You can find some other graphics online. I wanted to give you a quick little rundown of balance. Center of mass is above the base if you're balanced and stability. Larger base because you have to shift that center of mass further and lower center of mass because you have to raise it up higher. All right.